Thank you. Uh, the presentation time will be 30 minutes and there will be a 10 minute question and answer session after the presentation. Please give a warm welcome to Tushar Sadwani. It's all right. So, so this talk uh, will be about static analysis. And um, the, so the, the main the motive behind the talk is just to explain to you uh, what static analysis the, the, the really means and like what are the practical uh, the practical use cases uh, for static analysis. Uh, so I work as a language engineer at this company called uh, Deep Source, where we use a lot of static analysis to do things like find the problems and the, the code quality uh, issues uh, with your code base, and then automatically fix them. Uh, so this talk is uh, divided in uh, three parts. Uh, the like the first uh, talks about the the problems with large code bases. The, the second part is uh, talking about static analysis, what exactly that means, and why should I care about it? How does it help me maintain my code base? So this part one, the problem with large code bases. And the problem basically is that, uh, that every sufficiently large code base is going to create th th its own uh, coding conventions. Uh, I'll give you some examples of that. Uh, say that all API routes should start with some the version prefix, like slash API slash v1. Or yeah, something like all the database models should have the UUID as the primary key of the model. And they can also be testing conventions that, that every the Python file file.py should have the test underscore file.py in the test folder that will contain the unit tests uh, the, for that file. Or something as simple as that all the controller classes, uh, they must have a name that, en that ends with a uh, controller, like the home controller, the student controller, and so on. But the problem with this is not that the, the conventions are bad or anything. The conventions are actually a good thing. But the following the conventions is very hard. Like, the, you can't always uh, remember the, what the convention is for a large code base. And how are these conventions uh, currently maintained? Uh, they're maintained using the manual code review, the, where the, the project maintainer or your team, the team lead or your reviewer will uh, take a look at your code and make sure that you know, that all the conventions are followed. But that doesn't really work. Uh, the code reviews are slow. They take a long time. And they're error prone uh, because the humans can make mistakes. And the, once the convention is broken, it becomes confusing for everyone. So how, does, how should we manage conventions? Uh, the, well, I'm, pro I'm proposing that you can automate the entire process. Uh, the, where you write down the, the, the conventions as code. So then you test for these the, the conventions by writing tests. And then you run the tests as part of your CI, the test suite. But the big question is, the conventions as code, how do you do that? And the answer for that is static analysis. So static analysis basically just means finding facts about your code uh, the, without actually having to run it. Uh, that's the book definition of static analysis. So I prefer to call it to analyze the structure of your code and to take some action based on that. Uh, some the common software like the linters, uh, pylint, flicket, and so on, the code formatters, black, and import sorters, th th they all th are doing static analysis th in the background uh, to do what they do. And how, th how exactly they, they do they do that? Uh, the basic idea is that they uh, they treat they treat your code 
to us some data. If they read the code, if they find patterns in it, and then they take some action. Uh, some the really simple ways and popular ways to do static analysis can be, say, text-based. So where, so whenever you try to, to grep for something in your code base, that's what they're technically they're doing static analysis. So because so you are treating your code as some data, then you're running like some query on it. Um, so, so one more so a really good example would be uh, token traversal, uh, where you could do something like say, let me see. So say that you have the code like this that the they creates an SQL query by taking a string and doing dot format. Now we know that this can the potentially lead the the to SQL injection. So to be able to find a pattern like this, what you can do is use the tokenize module in Python. It's the built into Python, and that will so turn your code into tokens, and then, so in the tokens, so you can see that there's a string that starts with the select, and then there's a dot and format. So if you see that pattern in some files, the token stream, you can figure out that so there is a chance for SQL injection there. So you can, so you can also use the token traversal for, uh, for static analysis. But the third and like by far the most the powerful and the, the most common way to do static analysis is the, through this thing called AST travels. So now let's talk about ASTs. And I'm going, I'm going to be talking the, by example. So if you take a look at this the piece of code, it's just the two lines to the, where you have an if statement and the print function call. If you look at the AST of this code, it looks something like this. And yeah, it's pretty complex, but you can so think of it so yeah, just like this JSON object. So where so what you have is an if node so that has a test the condition so where the left side is the name answer. Yeah. The, so the operator is the double equals, and the right side is the constant 42. Here the body of the if node they contains only one, the one object, the, which is a function call. Um, here the left side of the function call, just as in the function being called, is the name print, and the, the, the arguments passed are just one constant string. And yeah, so it. So pretty much, the, what an AST does is it, it it takes the language syntax, then it turns it into the, the actual information that the source code is they're trying to say. And this will probably also be better the, the, with a demo. So I'll just do that. Uh, let's go back to the code.py file that we saw. Uh, let's to simplify it. A little bit, and I have the, the pre-created this the file called getAST.py. So where so we're doing something so very simple. So let me make this a bit bigger. So we're importing the AST module. So we're opening the the code.py file and reading its code. This the code variable this is just a string, and then the then we pass it uh, to ast.parse, then we get a tree object. And then we print it out with the, some indentation, and that's all that the code does. Let's quickly look at the output of this code. And I'm going to, I'm going to, to modify the, the source file while I do this. So, so on the right side, this is the as the output of uh, the Python the code that we just saw and on the left side here that's the contents of the code.py so, so, so as I change the file uh, the syntax tree should reflect on the right side 
तस राइट ना दट्स इट वॉज जस्ट अ मॉड्यूल ते पायथन फाईल तो कॅन ऑलवेज बी कन्सिडर्ड ॲज अ मॉड्यूल ते व द बॉडी ते कंटेन्स ओनली वन नोड तो विच इज विच इज इट्स अन असाईन नोड दॅट ते काय हुज टार्गेट ते स्टेबल नेम अँड जे द वॅल्यू ते इज ते कॉन्स्टंट ते फाय वर टू से रिप्लेस दिस विथ अ क्लास द बॉडी चेंजेस टू ते क्लास डेफिनेशन द विथ द नेम सी द बेसिस आर एम टी बिकॉज द वी हॅवन वी हॅव प्रोवाइडेड एनी बेस क्लास बट इफ यू वर टू डू सो इट वुड द शो अप राईट हिअर सो नाव ते नाव द यो द नेम बी ते इज वन ऑफ द the base classes yeah. the body is just pass and uh, decorator list is empty but we could for example have some decorators like this bar baz then now there will be a name foo and there will be an attribute the where bar has an attribute baz so it's the, the pretty much the literal translation of the code that we see on the left to the structure on the right and uh, if i were to run the python console here and i try to uh, to create any then ast like this say that i have a function foo and it does a uh, print hello that's the code i get the tree sort of it So, so now we have yeah, we have the module object then inside the module so there's a body so which is a list that only contains one thing so which is a function definition so if we get the function out we can see that the the function has the so takes uh so it has to so some so you can find the info about the uh, so the arguments like so uh so we can see things like okay does it have any the position only arguments no nope. does it have any variable arguments none and th- th- we can also see the body here yeah, the body contains the one expression the th- whose value is a call node and the call the call node should have some properties on it like the function the function is the name and the names child yeah the function is called print similarly there should also be args here and yeah there's just the one argument whose value should be hello so yeah so pretty much so the entire code you can traverse just here by walking the tree so that's the idea the so behind an ast now what do i do with the ast well the, the like the, the obvious answer is to traverse it stas in you find the certain the code patterns in you can inside the sub trees of the syntax tree and you can the, they say that okay that pattern this bad or that pattern can be converted to this the better pattern and so on and so forth so so you, so you can to use the syntax tree for lints for for formatting and for so many other things and how exactly do you do that so that's what we'll that's the what we'll see in the next section there's the two major uh, two major ways uh, there's a built in ast.walk function and for advanced use cases so you can write the visitor class So yeah how exactly do, what does this help in the maintaining your code base let's take a look at that right now first let's clear this yeah so here that i have the one the code base uh, with the project called my project the project only has a one dependency the fast api then we use the the uvcon as as the web server and uh, the code looks something like this the way 
we so we create a fast api application then we have some endpoints like slash slash api the the user messages and so on then then the, we have a models folder that has the chat model the message model the user model and so on that's pretty much it um and as they give us insights they will maintain project so there is also some tests and the tests just they check some endpoints and see the output so i believe we should be able to do py test and yeah both the tests are passing so that's a good thing now what time the the what time to to so my suggestion would be that you start by writing a test then now in the test you want to write your the code conventions so let's choose one convention that we want to enforce to say to say in this project uh, we could to use the same example as uh, that to all the api endpoints to should have the version prefix so so that will be our test and uh, to be able to do that i need two helper functions uh the first one to will be to get all the python files that are in my project so that i can i can convert them into trees and find problems with them uh and to do that i'll be using pathlib um so i'll get the the current files path then we need to go up one folder then up one more folder to find the source folder dot parent dot parent then then i'll do a glob then inside source then i want every single python file dot py yep so now if i were to do for file in get python files just print out the the file and uh, so let's quickly see if that's actually working well uh, tests validation test and i'll give dash s so that we can see the what's being printed uh, okay non type is not it. yeah uh, we have to so we have to return this okay so we are to getting all the four files that are in the source folder of the project all right uh okay now that we have the files what we can do is uh we'll import the to the, the ast module again and we'll do tree equals ast dot parse the file dot read text that way so so now we have an ast and so what exactly they do we need to validate now uh whenever we see something like that app dot get and some string that starts with slash api that should have their slash the v1 after it like slash v1 slash charts so that's what we care about so so the structure will be something like um so we have a function that we have as a decorator which that we have an attribute app dot get and then the first argument is the constant slash api slash the v1 slash charts now i could take the technically validate that that they will check this the for every single the the decorator in the app but i think that would be the too complicated the for the stock so, so all i am going to validate is that the whenever a string starts with the slash api it should also have slash v1 after it so yeah let's see how can we write that uh so i'll get tile to find every single node in the tree by doing uh, by doing ast dot walk then now the, we need to make sure that oh, that's a, that it's a string um how do we see if it's a string so so strings will be a constant object uh ast dot constant 
and then the the constant has what the the constant has a value which is the, the what we care about and the value is a string and that the value starts with slash api and it doesn't start with slash api slash v1 then we know that something has gone wrong now we need to raise an issue saying that okay in in this uh, uh, file path the uh, yeah that in this the uh, file path we uh on on some line we have found this issue which is that uh api end point doesn't have version prefix there you go okay so now we need to find out 10 minutes get yeah, the line so which will be node dot line number so you can find out the so what line to so some ast node is on by doing the uh, node dot line number and that's pretty much it then so now we need to define the raise issue function itself that will that will simply do pytest dot fail and for that we need to import pytest so pytest dot to fail uh three arguments here there's the the file there's the line and then there's the message we can say file this file on line line and then the message itself so now we have a then now we have a test uh for this package so let's try running that test now okay so it says the failed uh the this file the on line 18 you know the api endpoint what doesn't have a version prefix so is that true um then on line 18 the slash api endpoint that the what does not have a slash v1 so let's fix that and try to run our test again then now the test passes so that's Okay, like a really basic, the th th very simple example of how to write the validation test that can make sure that the conventions of your code base can be maintained. And say that in the future, so you want to migrate the okay, from version one of the API to to version two of the API. So basically, all you have to do is change uh, from v1 here to v2, and then keep. to to fixing your code until this test passes once this third test passes now you know that you have to to they have successfully migrated to all the endpoints in your application to v2 so like there this can be very helpful to for such cases as well so now i did mention that for advanced use cases so you can also write a visitor class so i'd like to demo that as well and for that let's try to write a test that will uh, try to validate that the models that we have here they always have uh, like so we are uh, the so we are using the pydantic for the models and there is always an id and we want that to be the uu id so there was so let's they try to write a test that will validate that let's call it test model has to you id so how do you do that let's quickly copy this part so now we have the tree the now what we can do is we'll the so we'll the so create a visitor class so let's call it model validator and it will that extends the, the node visitor and will to define some things is the syntax good here yep so 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 you can write the lot of these the visit underscore the methods that will only be called for that one type of node 
So since we care about uh, class definitions, we'll be using class def. Then I'll get rid of the type annotations for now. Let's take a look at the code structure again so that we, the, we know what to validate against. So we care about uh, this structure. We have a class user that extends from base model and then it has some IDs. It has a user ID and say it has a name. If you look at the structure, uh, let me shrink that. Yeah, so there will be a class def that, so inside the bases, there will be a name the, the, with the ID base model. That's what we care about. And then the body has some, so these, you can annotated the annotated the assignment the nodes that we care about uh, the, the, where the annotation should be UUID so let's try to write a test for that as well so so what we need to do is uh, if th th any base name is base model the, for that the, for that class in node dot basis then we need to look inside its its yeah for the annotations in the class so those will be yeah, inside the body for statement in node dot body if the statement is a what was it again let's check yeah so a double n assign that's the kind of node a the annotated assign node let's quickly make this group like that and uh, the annotation should have a it has an annotation property and that should be a uuid then we'll break out of this and so if we never break out of this the for loop yeah, that means that we found a class that does not have a UUID key. So that means that we can raise our issue here. And the file will be here and we'll pass the node.line number again. And the message can be that model doesn't have UUID. That's pretty much it. So yeah, we don't have a file, right? So we'll have to get the file from here. So it will be like a model validator. And we'll have to pass the file in here. So that will go in the constructor, right? Self dot file equals file. Let's take it in. And now we can and now that we have the validator, we can do validator dot visit our tree. And that should be it. Then now it will be self dot file. Yeah. So that should be the visitor. So now let's see if I wrote it properly. Okay, we have one failing case to where the file user.py on line 5 doesn't have a UUID and let's check oh no it does I something got messed up hmm. three minutes all right uh, let's try to debug this uh, so so we know that that it is going in there and then the annotation should break Let's try to print these out. Uh, dumping the statement. Now if I do pytest validation dash dash s. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, so annotation is that's a name node that's not a string okay so we fix that by doing so the annotation is a name node and the the 
the annotation dot id that should be uuid and okay let's try that again okay so it says chat dot py on line 6 the model doesn't have a the uuid and yeah indeed it does not chat id it is an integer so we need to fix that let's try to do that from uuid import uuid and this should be a uuid and now we run the test again uh, the api endpoint is broken wait is it really oh yeah we, yeah we change it to 2v2 there we go v1 and so now all the tests pass so yeah now we have two tests that will that will help us the greatly in the future the whenever we they make the major changes to the code base or just to maintain the conventions so yeah that's basically the idea so this was the very like the, the, the simplified version of the idea of static analysis so just say that you want to learn the more about ASTs, so I have this the blog that teaches you how to build tail inter the from scratch. Then it's a really de a detailed article, so you can the, the follow that to learn more. Uh, the, yeah, the source code and that yeah, the tests that I wrote well, they are available on the GitHub. The slides are available on the tshr.me the slash essay the for static analysis and yeah, if you want to talk, to talk more about to, 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 to these topics, to, to you can reach out to me on Twitter. And yeah, that's it. Thank, to, thanks for your time. Thank you for the uh, presentation. Uh, there's a couple of questions on Slido, so we'll start with uh, this question. Are there some high-level or abstract libraries with which we can reduce some of the boilerplate code when writing the tests for AST? So, yeah, you definitely can. So, I believe there's a few. So, I believe there's this one called AST the, the query. Let me make sure. AST query might be better to just head to PyPI. So, okay, that's not there. Uh, the, uh, yeah, but I believe that uh, oh, there's a package the called AST query. Like, that works a lot to, like, I, to, like uh, for the XML parts that you've seen. Like, they go like, some ID should be this, uh, foo, and then that should have the, yeah, there's some second element that then something so should have the ID bar. So you can write the queries like that on AST query, and that will help you to find like very specific patterns with a very short amount of code. Uh, the next question is uh, Do you write your own linter for your everyday work? Uh, so you're not really supposed to write an entire the linter for yourself. The the pylint and flake it are the really the good for that. So they run very fast and the they have the very like the you they have a very nice the, the plugin API. So you can write your own lints on pylint and flake it as well. But yeah, this was just like okay, that's just the the demonstration of the how do you build something like that. Yeah, though, but uh, like, th th there's th th like these there are certain the code conventions that you have. The, the linters won't catch something like that so, because that's not an issue. Uh, that's just th something that you follow in your project. So for those things, writing your own validation scripts like this, uh, th I think it's a, th a great idea. It saves you a lot of time. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, that's all the questions for now. So everyone, please give a big round of applause for the speaker.
If you have any questions and you would like to talk to the speaker directly, please go to the hallway behind us. Uh, there's other speakers being prepared, so please do not uh, gather around the stage. Also, sponsors have their own booths, which we encourage you to visit. All participants who have purchased tickets can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsors' booths. If you collect the specified number of stickers, you can exchange them for a limited edition t-shirt. We look forward to your participation. Thank you.